doesn't kind of feel real. It's all like well and good when you plan on it, but like seeing the real thing and actually standing here, you will kind of realize how big it is. But like as I said, like it's all done now. Could it, could I have trained more? Probably. Could I have recovered more? Yeah, maybe. Does it matter? No, because nothing can be changed now. There's no going back. <laughs> Let's go. It still hasn't really hit me. I know I'm gonna do it. I have to do it. It still just feels so surreal because like that's something you hear like other people do something that like you just read about or you watch but you never contemplated about you doing something like that thinking about the entire 555 could be daunting could be a waste of time i don't know but that's not i'm not gonna do that let's get to bantry force yeah. let's go I first started running at the start of COVID. At the start, I was dying and gasping for air after like two, three minutes of running because essentially I was not a runner. Like I've never properly run before that. And then within like three weeks of starting running, I managed to do that elusive to 25K. So I was like hooked because I was thinking, how much more can I push myself? Push for five is an all Ireland run from Mezen to Malinhesh, spanning 555 kilometers over the course of five days, which is just slightly under three martins per day. Some days actually are three martins per day, so. Nice, easy stroll in the park. Like the way I like to approach it is just 111 park runs. Nice and easy. <laughs> and why did you decide to do it? Like where did you kind of, I suppose, find the, the initial inspiration to do such a long distance? Uh, do you mind if I do it, do it, do it, so just by ourselves? Yeah, sure. Cool. There you go now. I just want to get it over and done with because like... Okay, here we go. Yeah, see? Bye! <laughs> <laughs> like, I, 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 I might as well like, run back to work though. Like, we'll be actually kind of shorter to run to Malin. Like, cool, let's go. Let's go. Let's get it done. It's actually getting real, eh? I think this is... Like, I told you yesterday, like, it hasn't hit me. It still hasn't really hit me yet. Like, I think like, it won't be until I actually press the button on my, like, watch and I start running. Mm -hmm. Like it's all just feels surreal, like being at the edge of Ireland, looking over the ocean with a full moon look, look over me. Like it's something you see in documentaries and movies, not like something you do yourself. Good morning, people! It is 5 a.m. We're at Mizzen Bridge, Mizzen Head. Project 555 starts now. Let's go. Fucking energetic, man. I'm, I'm buzzing now. I'm genuinely am buzzing. When I was starting my watch, I felt, I felt relieved. It, it genuinely felt like all, all, all the hard stuff is done. It's just the easy part. It may seem very counterintuitive that the running part is the easy part, but like it's in my head, it made very much sense that it's just moving forward and I just cannot allow myself to stop. And it is as simple as that. So like, it was a very much, very simple task. Just keep moving forward and nothing else mattered. And I just felt relieved at how simple it was and how just, uh, how can just proceed with the goal. Where's Martin almost down? I'm a bit apprehensive of the upcoming 40K, but at the same time, like, I'm looking forward to it because like, once that's done, like, that's a big chunk, kind of just take it take off the board. Uh, the next one I'm going to, that I have on the map is Mill Street. Mill Street. 
And L3 is like 50 kilometers away from here. So like that's that's the North Star. I'm so happy to be over the hill now, like that like after this little section that's the worst of the elevation done. It's a very small victory but like you just gotta gotta collect them and keep moving but I'm so happy to have the hills done now. There will be plenty of more hills but nothing as bad as this. It just almost two Martins in. Just one more Martin left and we we're home for today. Let's go. I completed day one, I was just happy to have the hills behind me because I knew looking at the map of the elevation, most of the elevation of big hills was done then. I was somewhat wrong, I found out later on, but that was a problem for future me. But I was just happy to have that distance behind me. I didn't get as far as I wanted to. I was hoping to get an extra 15k done that day, but it was getting dark and because I was going on like busy roads with very little lighting, we decided to kind of call it off and play it safe. What is done is done. And that's kind of what I decided throughout the entire run. Whatever happened, happened. There's, I did not allow myself to dwell on anything that has already happened because I could not change it. And then when it about moving forward, I would only think about the next 40 kilometers at a time because if I was to think about the entire distance from the start, from the get-go, it could become very overwhelming. There could be a lot of possibilities of what if of planning. So you just deal it at the Martin at the time, simple as. I think like if all things go well today, we'll be in Nina, which is gonna be we'll be back on back on back on track. Ooh. Yep, I'm feeling it. <laughs> Definitely feeling it. I just have to stop listening to the body, that's all. <laughs> A very smart thing to do. And I'll be fine. I said, once I get the first fire tank in, I'll warm up and I'll be fine. And if you say that you'll be fine enough time, you'll start believing in it. So it's all about that placebo effect, man. I have very fond memories from my run in Cork, but it genuinely felt like I was making zero progress because it was like almost two days in. I haven't left my first county. And all I'm seeing is just like cork flags and it just like feels like I'm going backwards almost back to Mizzen. And as I was exiting Charleville, I just saw this sign saying, welcome to Limerick. And I was genuinely just so ecstatic. I started shouting like, fuck yeah, we're in Limerick. I am definitely the happiest person ever to enter Limerick. I was just so happy to finally go to a different county. New county represented progress. And after that, like also once I was in Limerick, County just began to kind of take off because they were much smaller than Cork. So like for me, it was just like another small win. Nobody has ever in their life been as happy as I am right now to enter Limerick. Small wins, let's go. I think with day two, I was going through a very dark patch. There was no light. Uh, my torch went out and I was very much moving in darkness and it felt like I was making zero progress. It's been very circular. Started off shit, got very, got very, very good. And has kind of reversed back to the unfortunate shit set again. Like the knees feel very weird. This morning, looking at the map, thinking I have a 100k to do. The, but the way I started, before it's like 15, like, like I, I was, I was surprised I got to Charleville. To be honest, like, like that, that for seven hours where I just like, no idea.
in there, right? Between yesterday and today, we've done five marathons already. That's nice. To be honest, day three, I was not really concerned about you know what's ahead, what's behind, but it was the day when I genuinely began to question if it is possible to get it done. So day one and two went very well. I got 100 plus K done each day. I made some progress. I was slightly behind on plan, but I was maybe like 10 kilometers, 15 kilometers behind. So like I saw that as you know something I can catch, catch up on. In the following days for the morning of day three it started off with the compression boots not working and it was a bit of a mental dampener because uh, in the previous two days i've resorted to compression boots as my recovery and whether or not it was compression boots or if it was placebo effect i don't know but it worked for me and that's all kind of mattered for me and not having that comfort to rely on in the morning kind of felt like i was left by myself and there's like given that there's no, there's still like 300 kilometers plus to go, I was questioning how I'm gonna do it. Yeah, uh, I'm moving. I haven't really ran today as such, like I've done like, as fast as I can go, probably like eight minute paces, seven and a half minutes. I am pretty convinced that Longford is out of the question today. Because it's like long for like three thirty, and we're just heading to twenty ish. So like, I don't see myself doing a hundred k today unless like some miraculous recovery happens. For two three hours, nobody is there. I am barely moving in a field in awfully I think somewhere, and it just like feels like that was the end of five five five. You know, it's kind of how it all stalled. Gonna do a military leg up situation. Like every inch of my body is screaming to stop right there. Before I decided to run 555, I had a bit of a life changing experience, if you wanna call it that thing. I think it was like two weeks before the Ironman, I found out I had a blood clot in my leg. That was bit of a shock to the system. I didn't really expect that because I didn't have any risk factors. I was not like sedimentary. I was not smoking, drinking. So like I should not have had anything like that. But a month after that, once I was away, I had a follow-up incident where I had a return feeling in bottom of my legs of the blood clot in bottom of my legs. And it is possible to get a blood clot in bottom of your legs. It is possible to get it uh, when you are in blood thinners, but it is very much like rare to happen. My mind just went straight into like the worst case scenarios, like complete overdrive. Like I went into full panic attack. I was at the time away with my friends on a weekend away and I just remember going into a room and just hyperventilating, crying and just like feeling how unfair this is because the thing with blood clots, they can travel up to you like a blood, uh, heart, lungs, brain and essentially just kill you. I remember doing a, doing a death note just in case if I don't wake up and doing something like that, uh, all the bullshit falls away. You realize what it does not matter at all. You realize what matters a lot and what you should have done, what you should not have done in your life. And that entire experience of just like sitting down and like facing those kind of things, uh, really shook me and one of those things with that kind of that came out of that was trying to like live my life to the fullest trying to see what uh what i can do like uh while i'm still alive so just having the mental switch allowed the body to follow the lead all of a sudden i was actually back running i was also very angry at myself for allowing myself to slow down i realized being so slow for those for 10, 11 hours of the day slowed me down in terms of progress and ability to get to the end of the run within five days. It's very easy to use positive emotion for fuel, for motivation, but alas, you don't always have that. But when it comes to kind of negative emotions, there's two choices that you have. You have them drag you down 
and make you feel like sorry for yourself or whatever or you can use them for fuel feeling sorry for yourself doesn't really solve the situation you still have to run you still have to get the project completed what it does is slows down the progress and makes you wander off mentally and not be in the game It's, it was like, like I keep telling you, solve what the small wins. Once you have enough of them, your confidence just kind of explodes. Back to square one, let's go. Okay, chat. After like, it takes experience and going through shit to realize that like, if you stick it out for long enough, at the other side, there is like opportunities and there's like gains to be made. Not just like physical gains, but just kind of mental gains. Same with like today, like it could have, could have been very easy to just kind of quit it. During my kind of training, up to, lead, lead, leading up to this, there have been numerous times where I had to kind of stop my run, like, either like a 50 or 60k run, like halfway through, or like that shitty part, that lying at the back of a car and almost crying. Not screaming, but like mentally just like being exhausted, physically being just dead. There comes a time where you just kind of just switch and like a second battle will come or like something that kind of will just like click and you will finish or you will just find a feel within yourself. But like if you don't go through that little shitty moment, you won't get to the good part. Does that make sense? So like I've learned from doing those training 50, 60, 40 k's, whatever, like that. Not every single k is going to be enjoyable, but if you suffer through enough shitty ones, you will get to enjoy more good ones over the long, long, long span. It really comes down to just not quitting. <laughs> it's as simple as that, like, and like it just kind of goes down to like how much you're willing to suffer through. left ankle, maybe Achilles, something down there, mm -hmm. has been popping. I only have another like 10k until the break, so I'm gonna just keep ignoring it mm -hmm. until then. That's pretty much kind of the approach to everything else down there. So, leading up to day five, unfortunately, because of day three, I and Partially day two, I fell back on how far I should have been. So because of that, I had to stop sleeping and keep going to make it in time. So I was very much adamant just to get to Malin in time. I'm, I'm convinced my fucking adrenaline is just going to carry me through. Like one, once I hit Derry, that leaves me with like a marathon left, like 39k. Trying cold and trying like warm space and hoping I can make sure of them all just like numbs enough the pain or distracts me enough from the pain just for the next 14 hours that's all I need like 13 hours See you, cheers, man. Fuck, bro, that's fast. 120 kilometers out from uh, the end zone I was feeling very very strong we changed our uh, out I dropped my hydration vest and was Running, running. I was feeling strong. I was very much in zone to get to the Malin head. Because uh, I found like doing this for five, ten minutes gives me about 15 to 20k, whereas boots, I'm going to use it for an hour and I get about 30k. So, quick maths. I was about 10k out from Straban, which was maybe like 90k out from uh, Malin. My right leg started acting up on me, started to feel like it was beginning to detach from the leg, from the bone, and each step felt like there was like a bit of a movement, like a, almost like a ripping sensation from the leg. Can you tell him to prep pink tape for the next like 2k? I want to see if it can dive down, dive down and has a start moving. Mm -hmm. If not, I'm just going to wrap it around and cut off the circulation. If there's no blood flow, no feelings, no feelings, no pain. Simple. I try to kind of power through as is, I imagine maybe three, four kilometers in that. The pain didn't go away, it just got progressively worse. So I decided to stop 
and bandage it up. And we still had about eight, nine hours to get to Malinhead just within the five day on the dark coat of. I feel fine, but I think I could run faster without the vest. Uh, would it be possible to see you maybe once every 5k or something like that? Mentally, no, I am ready to go. Physically, like, my body is just, like, not responding to it. Mm -hmm. And the question is, like, so we have eight hours to get 77 kilometers, is it? 73. 73. Like, on fresh legs, I would have no doubt to get that done. With this uh, current situation, like, I'd say I want to get... 40 ish, 50 ish K if I'm, if, if I'm lucky, like. Like, re re regardless, like, I will be finishing past the five day thing. I try to always be as positive as possible, but at that moment, I allowed myself, my true self, to really slip. Because, like, in my head, it just seemed like my body won again. It was just painful. It just, I genuinely felt like I not only failed myself, but everyone who was with me along the journey because of how much like belief and hope they had in me. And that hurt even more than failing myself. That pain, that failure, the feel of the feet continued on in the morning, especially because when I woke up, the pain did not quite go away. And I still had the distance to cover, which made me feel like the entire break, and not pushing through, not going through with my initial plan of trying to get there at 6 a.m. was a big mistake. So like the, all of that was even more compounded with the feeling of regret, you know, I should have done such and such. Quitting is the easy part. Quitting can be done by everyone. But it is deciding to go through pain. It is deciding to not to quit to make the making of the extra force. You can listen to every single motivational song out there. Watch every single motivational video and movie out there, read every single motivational book and quote, but if you don't have a solid why inside of you, the, the reason for why you're doing something, the real driving force behind you, none of those things can make any difference. If you choose the challenge ahead of you, or the challenge you're going through is significant enough to override the why, the reason for why you of course so undertook the challenge. Then start off that why was a fake why. Because if you do have a real reason, real why, that will drive you. That will be sufficient enough to push you through anything. It will be sufficient enough to keep you going without any external motivation. For everyone, that why is different. But how it affects you, how it should drive you, that all remains the same. Yeah. When I made it to Malin Hatch, I didn't really feel it. For me, the end and the kind of the like, goal was not touching the Malin Hatch sign or anything like that. It was just going through that journey and proving to myself. Because uh, throughout the entire thing, there were so many opportunities for me to stop or just like pull out. And I was able to say no to every single one of them. And for me, it was just a huge personal win. It's, it's, this entire journey was very much me against my body. One moment I would love for people to experience and kind of see would be 
going from the lowest of lows, which was day three when I was barely walking, you know, to like feeling the highest I ever felt throughout the entire run, you know, feeling like I was like I was back on track, having that clarity. If people could experience that roller coaster, and then, you know, they're pure emotions. If people could experience that, that I believe would be very much life changing because very, very much like not just in running, like in life, sometimes you feel like situations, such situations won't go away. They will never stop. But like something like this, you know, going from very, very low to very, very like high, all like all within the space of like two hours, it kind of just shows you in perspective that you could just, you just need to keep moving forward. You know, like just trust the process. Uh, in a way, this challenge for me was a stepping stone. Uh, fortunately, I had to prove to myself that my body and myself are still friends. I think we're back on the same page. It also kind of taught me that I can push myself and do more. So going forward, I would like to see how much more I can push myself, how much more I can push the limits and we'll see. Maybe it's longer distances, maybe it's bigger challenges, but as I said, you're in the own, it's not done. Tired now. I think I go home now. Emotional roller coaster. Yep, I'm in so much pain.